so there are now uh, there uh, there are nine phyla in kingdom of animalia which is the phylum of porifera cynaderia platyhelminthes nematode mollus and leads astropod echinoderma and also cordate but today we will only learn about the phylum of porifera cynaderia uh, uh, Snidaria and also Platyhelminthes. So, um, Snidaria, which is also known as Calcarea, and also Silesia. So, sponges in the phylum of Porifera are different, which is known as a phylum Porifera, are different from other animals because they have an as uh, a, a symmetric body meaning to say they do not have radial symmetry or, or um, bilateral symmetry their body contains only cells therefore the lack of true tissues because they do not have any germ layer meaning to say they do not possess um, they are not they are not tripoplastic and also they are not dipoplastic and they also lack of organs so the phylum forifera are mostly marine animals which is widely of varying size and shape while only a few are fresh water and some of the sponges or phylum porifera habitats are habitats for many other animals such as the worms and also the shrimp in the uh, marine life and their sizes are varies with each other some are big enough to sit in and some as tiny as fingernails so the sponges are known as porifera because they possess hundreds of tiny pore as you can see here okay which is known as a porocyte and this typical body of sponge consists of hundreds of pore or ostia and the water will enter the sponges from the ostia and they will pass through the central cavity or spongo cells and they will flow through the sponge open end as you can see over here which is known as the osculum in which they will they will enter through the porocyte or the ostea, ostea goes to the spongo cell here and it went out through the osculum so as you can see over here you get in through here get out um, enter the spongo cell and it will get up through the osculum so in phylum porifera they have four different types of cells the first one is flattened cell the second one tube cell the third is collar cell and the last but not least is amoeboid cell so flattened cells okay known as the pinocyte as you can see over here okay this is the okay let's see this one is the pore or the ostia this one is uh, the water will flow through the pore or the ostia and this part here is known as the spongo cells so the lining of the sponges is known as the pinocosite okay in which these flattened cells or called as the pinocosites will line the anterior surface of the sponges next is the tube cells also called as the porocyte as you can see here okay the porocyte form the pore or it will form the ostia of a simple sponge they can regulate a sponge diameter by contraction Next is the collar cells, which is also known as the canocyte. As you can see over here, this one is the collar cell or canocyte that will make up the inner layer of the sponges. And each cell is equipped um, with a tiny collar that surrounded, um, the surrounding the base of the flagellum. This one is the flagellum. Okay, and they do have the collar side here the collar tiny collar and last but not least is 
amoeboid cells. Okay, amoeboid cell, this one, amoeboid cell, which is also known as the amoebocyte, that is located inside the mesophyll of uh, the mesohyl, sorry, the mesohyl of the sponges. So, let's see how about the digestions of the sponges. So, sponges are suspension feeder in which they will filter a large amount of water for food. The collar cells are the food trapping structure by means that um, of the beating flagella and this cell will move a large volume of water through many microscopic pore or the ostia and chamber in the body. They will trap the suspended food particles in the microvilicola and they will engulf or transfer the food in the canal site where they a number of food vehicles that function in digestion. The digested food product will be transferred to the amoeba-like cell which is also known as the amoebocyte just now that located inside the mesohyl or the metric or the sponges. So the amoeba-like cell will later function in further breakdown, storage and distribute of food um, inside the sponges. So as you can see here, the flagella will help to transfer um, amount of the food inside the collar cells in which the collar cell will transfer the food to the amoebocyte that will um, digest and distributing the food um, molecules um, throughout the sponges and for protection sponges okay the between two layers of the cells um, which is between the pinocyte and also canocyte there is a semi-fluid metric uh, that known as a mesohyl here okay this one the yellow color one in which you can find a mobile cell like uh, inside the mesohyl and also there are a number of needle speckles okay needle speckles that made of silica and calcium carbonate that function as the skeletal support system for the um for the what we call it one uh for the sponges Okay, so meaning to say they have two protection, which is the mesohyl and also the needle speckles. And next, we're gonna look on the um, uh, reproduction. But before that, okay, the skeletal elements, which is made from the silica or calcium carbonate, is a reason why sponges are successful in their survival. Okay, because the predator dislike the sponges test because of the sam uh, sampling them is equivalent of eating a mouthful of glass splinter that embedded in the fibrous gelatin, which is the mesohyl. And furthermore, most sponges are very sting and also smelly. Okay, for reproductions, sponges reproduce sexually and sometimes sexually. Sexually reproductions of sponges um, involving the sperm that are released into the surrounding water that will be later pick, will be picked up by a nearby sponge and directed to the egg of the neighbor's, uh, nearby sponge within the mesohyl or the, the gelatin like uh, genetic like fluid by the amoebocyte. So the developing embryo will retain in the matrix of uh, or the mesohyl and the zygote will then develop into free swimming flagellate larva that will attach to a substrate and they will settle down to its cell's life so as you can see here this this sperm is being released by um, the other sponges and they will be traveled to the nearby sponges and then the egg 
inside these nearby sponges will fertilize with the sperm and it will develop into a zygote in the jelly-like uh, substances or known as the mesohyl which um, in which it is located between the cell layer and next it will be eventually the zygote will eventually become a free swimming larva and the swimming larva um, will swim from the body of the sponge out of the water and then after several days they will attach themselves to the substrate or any surface and they will develop into an adult and most of the sponges can move from one places to another places only in their larva stage but during um larva stages but during their adults um they live in the cells life here for asexual reproduction of sponges they reproduce through two ways either through fragmentations or gamels formation true fragmentation in which small fragments of sponges will break away from the parents and they will grow into new sponges meanwhile for gamels formation they will form by the amoebocyte or amoeba like cells so these are cluster of spore like collection of sponge cells that can survive until living condition improve they are protected by extreme cold and also drying out and later when the favorable conditions around the sponges are improved the gamels um, will germinate and they will establish a new colony of sponges okay so the second phylum of animals is um, phylum cynaderia so cynaderia are the animals with diploplastic meaning to say they possess only two germ layer okay or a tissue layer and their body lag at the mesoderm layer cynaderians have diversified into a wide range of both sessiles meaning to say they are not moving such uh, such as the sponges and they also have a motile forms including the jelly corals and also the hydras so most of the cynaderians live in the sea also same with the porifera only few of them are live in the fresh water okay so cynaderia um, do have a radial symmetry okay and Cyanidaria possess some unique stinging uh, device which known as the nematocyst or cyanocyte uh, uh, in which when stimulated at a small projecting trigger on its outer surface, the capsule with tubular train will um, be released. Okay in which the discharge uh, traits have a sticky prey trapping substances to capture and fan off the predator so there are some traits they uh, traits uh, traits that are equipped with buffs or a very sharp spine that contain a toxic substance that could paralyze their prey with the painful stings okay as you can see here, this one is a name of um, uh, a tentacles, um, a tentacles uh, for Hydra, as you can see here. In the tentacles here, they do have a uh, content a nepatosis, in which when something trigger um, this part, what will happen? The the nematocysts, um or the or known as sinocyte will move out and they will uh what we call they want discharge the trade and um and then they could paralyze the prey with this painful sting over here okay so for the body plants most of the cyanidrian consists of two plants either the polyps as you can see over here such as the hydra and also the sea animals 
and also the medusa such as the jellyfish so the medusa here resemble an umbrella and they are float in the water and the oral arm surround the central mouth under their belt for the polypody plant is a tube like and is usually attached to some substrate such as the phylum polyphera and at the other end and it may be solitary or part of a colony so also in Sanitaria, the out uh, they remember they are diploblastic meaning meaning to say they have two gem layer which is the ectoderm and endoderm the ectoderm layer form the epidermis that cover the body meanwhile the endoderm will form a gastrodermis that will line their digestive cavity and these thin layer are separated the inner and inner endoderm and outer ectoderm is separated by a thin layer that known as the mesoglia so medusa has abundant mesoglia that is helpful in providing buoyancy and also serves as a skeleton for the cyanidaria. And however, polyps have little mesoglia but they will use the water in their gut as the hydrostatic skeleton. For the nervous system of cyanidaria, okay, they have a nerve net in which it is interacting um, nerve cells that running through the body layer and it coordinates the animal response to stimuli as you can see over here okay the nerve net along the um, the tissue layer of the uh, sanitarians and both of the epidermis and also the gastrodermis will uh, possess cells that specialize to contact that are known as a contract uh, tile cells so contract tile cells same with uh, same with our sensory cell in which um, and same with our nerve cells in which carry out responses by contracting and also lightening um, itself for the reproduction, okay, the life cycle of sanitarian may have a four leaf and medusa st uh, stage, or it may have just a polyp stage, such as the life cycle of Obelia consists of feeding and reproductive polyps. So reproductive polyps will give rise to a sexually give rise asexually to medusa. So the medusa is usually the sexual form of a cyanidarian that will produce the epidermal or gastrodermal gonads. The medusa will undergo sexual reproduction yielding a zygote and the zygote will develop into free living larva. Same with the kingdom of the porifera which is known called as a plan planula that later will develop into either a polyps or medusa so as you can see over here first is the asexual reproduction um, of the synergia through the budding system portions of the colony um, polyps okay um, as you can see here, it will give rise to the medusa and the medusa will producing the gonad and this gonad will help the cyanidurian to undergo the sexual reproduction in which it will undergo the meiosis and fertilization and it will produce a zygote that will later develop into planula larva and this planula larva will develop into a mature polyps and the cycle will um, um, the cycle will repeat it again and again. Okay, for Sanadrian, these phylums have a different diver uh, have a diversity in which it can be include um, hydrozoan such as the Hydra and Opelia, uh, Cephozoan such as the jellyfish. Kubozoan such as the sea wasps 
and antozoans such as the sea anemones or the corals. For for the hydrozoa, mostly most of them are marine and only a few of them are fresh living in the freshwater. They have a both polyp and medusa stages um, during the, uh, their life and the polyp stage often colonial. For seafood zoa, such as jellyfish, they are all marine, none of them are freshwater. They do not have a polyp stage and they are free swimming. And the medusa is uh, the medusa stage is up to two meters in the diameter. For kubo zoa, such as jellyfish, all of them are marine. They are box shaped in structure of medusa. There is no polyp stage, complex, complex eyes, and also a potent venom. Last but not least is antozoa, or this, uh, such as the sea elements, or the corals. All of them are marine. None of them are freshwater, living in the freshwater. And the medusa stage completely absent. They only have uh, for leaf stage and most of them are sessile and living in the colony so remember um, just like I mentioned just now most of the um, hydrozoa and cyanidaria alternate between a polyp and also medusa stage and their polyps are living in the colonial and most of them are marine and some of them are fresh water okay so hydra is the most popular example of hydrozoan in which they live in the fresh water and typically attach to a rock. So during optimal environmental condition, they reproduce asexually by budding. So many hydrozoan will form a colony consisting of hundreds of individuals. It will start with a single polyp that reproduce asexually by budding, as I mentioned earlier. And instead of separating, the bud remain attached and start to form a colony. Okay, for Cephozoan, um, which includes jellyfish, they only have a medusa stage. Their polyp stage or uh, if the for their polyp stage or asexual form are being reduced, and true jellyfish are graceful. Sometimes they are very uh, deadly creatures because they can sting you and it will cause your uh, skin rashes, muscles cramp and even death to um, the peoples. So exclusively marine, C401 inhibit every ocean in the world and they are most commonly found to the shore in the shallow water. For Kubozoa, um, of Komozoa sanitarians, they are cube um, shaped animals or box shapes, medusa, and have a very complex eyes, highly toxic, and it can cause death within minutes. And one seawap have the amount of poison to kill 60 people. For Antozoa sanitarian, is a class within the phylum sanitary that contains the sea animals and also the corals. Unlike other sanitarian, they do not have medusa stage in their development, meaning to say they only form through the asexual um, reproduction uh, because they only have a polyp stage and they're living a social life. So coral, um, secret cow carrier structure that accumulate to form a huge reef such as the dinoflagellates are living mature with the corals and they supply their host with uh, oxygen, recycle the mineral waste and adjust the seawater pH to help build the calcium deposit in the host skeleton. So in return, the host or the corals will protect and provide them with carbon dioxide and also minerals. So uh, next, we're gonna look on the phylum of Platyhelminthes. So remember, besides Sanidarian, um, exhibit bilateral symmetry on 
and also triboblastic development. It could be divided into lophotrozoa, ecdysozoa, and deterostomia. And six of lophotrozoan phyla are the flatworm, rotifer, ectoprex, brachiopods, molars, and also annelids. So, um, for animals, from flatworm to human, have organs, right? So, an organ is a grouping of tissues arranged in such a manner as to perform specialized functions. So, interacting organ between two or more organs will form an organ system that contributes to the survival of the organism. So, flatworm are among the simplest um, animals and they are under the phylum of platyhelminthes. They are flat in structure, bilateral symmetry, and they are cephalized and also they do not have a celomet, which is known as a celomet animal with organ system. So the phylum platyhelminthes, um, such as the flatworms, include the free also include free living tubularians as well as the parasitic flux and also tapworms. The gut, they do have a gut that look like a sac with a single mouth opening through which the pairings will extend for food gathering. So a pairing is simply a muscular chip which flatworm use for feeding. So most of the flatworms are hermaphrodites, meaning to say they have both sexes, either female or male, in only one body. Okay, so flatworm or the phylum platyhelminthes can be divided into four classes, which is first is tubularia, second monogenia, third trematodo, and also the last one is cestoda. Okay, so for tubularia, most of them are marine, some live in the freshwater and few in terrestrial. They are predators and scavengers and their body surface are cilia. For monogenia, they are marine and freshwater parasites. Most infect the internal surface of the fishes and their life history is simple. They have a ciliated larva that starts infection on hosts. For trematodes, they are parasites and mostly vertebrate, meaning to say they have a backbone. Two sucker they attach to the horse, and most life cycle include intermediate and final horse. For cestodes, they are parasites of vertebrates. Okay, um, same with the trematodes, they have collects that attach to the host, and the proglottids produce egg and break off after fertilization, no head or digestive system, very simple, and life cycle with one or more intermediate host. First, we're going to look on the tubularia. So, as I mentioned earlier, tubularia live in the sea, only some of them are live in the fresh water, and they do have a four organ system. The first one is the digestive tissue, a digestive system in which they are carnivore, they eat animals and suck juice from the dead animals from protruding pharynx that branch out from the gastrovascular cavity. And they have long, highly branches gastrovascular cavity to distribute food to all parts of the body. So since they possess sac-like gut, the mouth is also the anus. Okay, as you can see over here. The mouth is actually referred also to the anus. And next, they do have uh, tubularia have a nervous system that consists of the eye spot, the brain, and also the nerves and also transverse nerve. As you can see here, this is the transverse nerve, horizontal, uh, a vertical line. So the for the horizontal line over here is referred to the uh, nerves. And tubularia 
also have water regulating system that consists of proton nephridia with phlegm cells that regulate body fluid volume and composition. And this proton nephridia is actually a network of tube that extend from excretory poles at the body surface to bulb shaped phlegm cells in tissue. So when excess interstitial fluid diffuses into the phlegm cells, a tuft of cilia inside the phlegm cell will flicker and drive the water through the tubes to the outside of the body through the nephridia pole or known as excretory pole, as you can see here. Okay, this is known as the excretory pore or also known as the nephridia pores. Last is that they also have reproductive system in which, in which they reproduce through a sexual reproduction by transverse vision where it constricts in the middle and it will divide them into two. The transverse vision also result in regeneration of the tubularia. And also, they are hermaphrodites, mean they have two sexes in one body because they have both testes and ovary on the same individual for sexual reproduction. So one may fertilize itself and make a clone of genetically identical offspring. However, cross fertilization between two individuals is being practiced also. Okay, next class of phylum platyhelmin test is mono uh, or the flux. So trematodes are internal or external parasites that living in vertebrate hosts. They have two suckers that will attach themselves to human intestine and they will suck the pre-digested nutrients of the host. They have extremely complex reproductive organs. For internal parasites require primary hosts such as the human for their sexual reproduction and intermediate hosts such as snail for larva development. So one particular example of life cycle in trematodes is Cystosoma japonicum or the human blood flux. So they meaning to say they need human hosts as their primary host in order for them to um, um, reproduce through sexual way to happen in the human intestinal vascular system. The fetalized cells or, or eggs will later leave the human cells, human body through the feces and the egg inside the feces will hatch and develop into free swimming ciliated larva and they will target to penetrate the host which is the snail. So in the snail, um, the larva will undergo a sexual reproduction and they will multiply uh, they, they will um, they will multiply to f uh, they will multiply and larva development will happen so the foctel of the larva are infective foam that will penetrate to human host if we if we touch the human, if we touch the snails or we eat the snail. Okay, as you can see over here. So, due to the ability to live in different hosts, such as snail and human, trematode needs to confuse the immune system of the host. So, they are very um, intelligent in which they will mimic the surface protein of the host by camouflaging themselves and it will cause the host immune system to tolerate them more than 40 years. So next is class monogia. So most of the monogians are external parasite of fishes in which they are most more closely related to the tapworms. And life cycle consists of a free living swimming ciliated larva that initiate infection to host. Last but not least is the class of cestod or also known as a type worm. Cestod are intestinal parasite of invertebrate in which they will absorb our pre-digested nutrients because they do not have digestive tract. 
So the third one, uh, the ancestor might have the gut and they might lose it during their evolution in the post intestine that is rich with predigested food. So tap one poses a long ribbon like body. So this is the tap one that you can find in the human host in which they resemble the planula of Sanaria that leading to speculation that bilateral animals evolve from the planula like ancestor. So to accommodate with their parasitic lifestyle, cystod or the tapworms, their body consists of anterior collex or a structure with the sucker, as you can see over here, or a hook. So this hook are solely attached for uh, to the host gut, in which our digestive tract, and they also possess a suckers to absorb our pre-digested uh, food or nutrient. Okay, so a string of proglottis buds behind each scolex uh, are equipped with both female and male reproductive organs. Therefore, these um, type worms are hemoprotic, meaning to say they have both sexes in one body. They met and transfer the sperm to one another. So this result in each pro Glottids that are capable of reproducing themselves because in one body they have egg and also sperm and because of an adapted one might have up to 1000 segments causing their capability in producing egg staggering so all the pro, uh, proglottids are the one for this from the scolic will store fertilized egg where they will break off and leave the body in the faces. So pig tapworm is the most popular tapworm. They need a definitive host um, containing the adult sexually reproducing stage, the humans, and also the alternate host which is the pig. So the pig that raise in unsanitary condition may contain the bladder worm that amended in their muscle and this consists of capsule containing the scolex. So when the bladder worm is ingested uh, such as in the pork chop, the gastric juice of the stomach will dissolve the walls of the capsule and they will release um, the bladder worms. So the scolex will turn inside out and attach by sucker and hook to the wall of the human intestine and it will begin to produce the proglottis. So this remain attached to the small intestine as they mature and they will develop both male and female sex organs. So um, most mature proglottis eventually break loose and pass out in the feces that containing the egg. So before this happened, the chain marriage length of 20 feet or 6 meters and contain over 1,000 proglottis. Each proglottis may contain up to 60,000 eggs. So the fertilized eggs later released by the shed of proglottis that may reach the soil ready to be consumed by the pig. So I think that's all for today class. Thank you.